Hello and welcome to Living Hope Church Online, brought to you by Living Hope Church Broadcast Media. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Ilori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. I am grateful to God that I have this wonderful privilege to continue a series that I start with some time ago titled In the Shoes of John the Baptist. I'm going to look at another important figure, another important Bible character today. And that person is Samson. So today's broadcast is titled In the Shoes of Samson in the shoes of Samson and the subtitle is there is no last chance with God in the shoes of Samson there is no last chance with God most of us we are aware of the story of Samson in the book of Judges there are three important milestones that we often are told about Samson. One, that Samson was conceived as a miracle baby. God chose him from the time of his conception in his mother's womb to be a Nazirite. A Nazirite is a special person in the Old Testament who swore an oath a vow to God to be consecrated to God sometimes for part of their life sometimes for the whole of their life in this case Samson was a Nazarite from the womb and he was dedicated to God for the whole of his life as a Nazarite Samson could not go near any dead body. He shouldn't touch any corpse. As a Nazarite, Samson should not cut his hair, the hair on his head. He should allow it to grow wild. As a Nazarite, Samson should not drink any alcoholic beverage. So, this is the first thing that we learned about Samson. That God ordained Samson as a Nazarite from the time of his conception in his mother's womb. God gave Samson a direct sign, a direct token, a direct confirmation that Samson is a Nazarite by ensuring that God gave him a supernatural strength so that Samson was extremely strong. Okay, God gave him supernatural strength and God told him that if he had to cut his hair, then that strength would leave him. Okay? So that's a very important thing to understand about the calling of Samson, that the power of God rested upon him to make him superhumanly strong, okay, that he could one-handedly destroy a whole army. He was so strong that he could destroy a whole army in battle, okay? And so God raised him up to be one of the judges or leaders of Israel in his generation. Okay, in his generation, Samson was the leader of Israel. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two, Samson began to fall in love with several women. This was something that was his weakness. Samson was falling in love 
with several women. He was having many sexual relationships, one after another. And this was something that he was not supposed to be involved in. That's point number two. Point number three. Samson eventually fell in love with a Philistine woman called Delilah. The Israelites and the Philistines were mortal enemies. The Philistines were constantly trying to remove Israel from the land, to push Israel out of the land that God had promised Israel. So the Philistines, they were mortal enemies of Israel. So it was really a bad choice for Samson to go and befriend a Philistine woman called Delilah. It was a bad choice for him because Delilah was used as a Trojan horse or as a decoy or as a scout or as a spy to gain access to the secret of Samson's superhuman strength. So Delilah was not actually a true lover of Samson. And Samson did not know this. If you remember the story very well, Samson eventually told Delilah the secret of his superhuman strength. So he told Delilah that if you should shave my locks, the locks of my hair, if you should shave my head, then all my strength would go because as a Nazirite, God had conveyed this power, this superhuman power to me through the ears on my head, through the locks of my hair. You know how the story goes. Delilah betrayed Samson to the Philistines while Samson was asleep on the lap of Delilah, the Philistines came and Delilah shaved Samson's head and gave them the locks of Samson. So Samson became pretty shaven, like a bald person. Okay? If you can see me, you will see what I mean by the fact that Samson had no hair on his head Again, he was completely shaven by Delilah. As a result, the Philistines came and they arrested Samson and they tortured him and they gouged out his eyes and they made him a slave of the Philistines. This was a particularly disgraceful moment in the history of Israel that their leader was captured and turned into a slave in the grinding mill of the Philistines. So, if you look at these three important connections in the story of Samson, you will see that Samson appears to be a very negative personality in the Bible. Someone that God chose but someone that in his attitude, in his relationship with God, he became reckless. He treated the calling of God upon his life with levity. He decided that having sex or sexual relationship with anyone that he fancied was more important than being obedient to God. To put it in a very simple term, Samson is like every one of us, a sinner, someone who is disobedient to God, someone who turns his back on God, someone who is in need of salvation, someone who needs to repent and then turn his back on his waywardness 
turn in his, or his back on his rebelliousness and allow God to come into his heart and to begin to shape his life. That is what Samson needed to do. That is why Samson is like all of us, especially if we are yet to give our life to Jesus Christ, if we have not become born again, if we have not received the free salvation that is found in the Lord Jesus. We are pretty much like Samson. There is no difference between us and Samson. We might say we don't have sexual intercourse with just any person like Samson did. But sin of any nature is sin. And if we break just one commandment, we have broken all. So we are all sinners unless and until when we give our life to the Lord Jesus and we ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because he paid the price on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Amen. Amen. That is the background to Samson's life. But today on this broadcast, I don't want to dwell on the negative aspects of Samson's life. I want to show us something very important in relation to Samson. So please come with me to Judges chapter 16 verses 21 to 22 and Judges chapter 16 verses 28 to 30. Judges 16, 21 to 22. Then the Philistines took Samson and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They burned him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Verse 22, which is important for today's broadcast. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Remember, in today's broadcast, the title is In the Shoes of Samson. There is no last chance with God. A lot of times, when we fall short of the requirements of God, we might feel that we have come to the last chance to be accepted back by God. Actually, on many occasions, a lot of people are told that there is the possibility that they will do something and that will be their last chance to be accepted back by God. Their last opportunity to be accepted back by God. Their last opportunity to be blessed by God. So it's important for us on this broadcast to emphasize the fact that Samson's hair began to grow again after it had been shaven. Why? Because there is no last chance with God. Amen. This does not mean that we should continue to abuse the grace of God and say grace will only abound. That is not what we are teaching in this broadcast. But what we are focusing on is that God is such a gracious God that there is no last chance with God. No last chance. Amen. Amen. So the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Come with me to Judges chapter 16, verses 28 to 30. 
Because when the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven, the supernatural strength of God that God originally gave to Samson by the anointing of God's Holy Spirit, that supernatural strength returned to Samson. So Judges chapter 16, verses 28 to 30. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple of Dagon that was worshipped by the Philistines. And he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it, the Philistines who were in the temple, mocking Samson in their festival, in their worship of their own idol. So the dead that Samson killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Remember that today the topic is in the shoes of Samson, there is no last chance with God. Samson fell aside or apart or fell short very many times. And when he was captured by the Philistine, people would think that was his last chance, that there was no way he could ever again come back into favor with God. But guess what? Samson's hair began to grow again. God's Holy Spirit that anointed Samson with supernatural strength returned to Samson. And Samson became again an instrument of God, a vessel of God's victory, a vessel of God's judgment against the Philistines. So if anybody was thinking something had messed up too many times, something had become morally bankrupt, there was no way back to God for something. In today's broadcast and from what we have read, that is so untrue. Your last chance? No. There is no last chance with God. What are the points that we can learn to let us know that there is no last chance with God, no matter how many times we have messed up. There is no last chance with God. What are the points that we must learn in the shoes of Samson? Point number one, always learn to return to your first love for God. We are not talking about just being remorseful that you are falling short of God. We are talking about a very deep, heartfelt response to the love of God for you. You come to a place where you just know in your heart your life has no meaning unless you return to your first love for God. In Genesis chapter 31, verse 13, God spoke to Jacob, who had messed up several times. God said, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. That is in Genesis chapter 31, verse 13. Jacob indeed arose. He indeed arose. And he indeed set off to go back to Bethel, 
where God had originally met with him when he was a teenager, running away from home, running away from his brother Esau. And God met with him and God blessed him. You see this in Genesis chapter 28. God blessed him and Jacob made a vow that he would worship God and that if God would look after him, he made a bargain with God that he would pay his 10% to God. And God indeed looked after Jacob. We didn't find any record that Jacob paid any tithe to God. But God nevertheless blessed Jacob. Because God is not waiting for anybody paying a tithe to him before he would bless them. 10% of your income is miserable. You should give God your life and then you should be generous towards God in everything that God has given you. Amen. God is not waiting for your tithe before he would bless you. And your tithe is, after all, the least that you can give anyway. In any case, Jacob decided to return to Bethel. But instead of going all the way to Bethel, Jacob stopped on the way. You know, Jacob was a person like me, a person like you. He was growing in his relationship with God. So it would fall short invariably, just as you too, in your relationship with God, day by day, you will discover that you do fall short in certain ways. So Jacob told God, yes, I'm setting off for Bethel, but guess what? He did not go as far as Bethel. So in Genesis chapter 35, verses 1 to 3, God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me in the way which I have gone. So the point which we are making is this. There will be no last chance with God. There is always an opportunity for God to take you back no matter how many times you have messed up. No matter how many times you think you have bankrupted your relationship with God, if you find the grace to return to your first love, to repent, and to restart your journey with God, God would always have you back. Amen. That's point number one. When we say there is no last chance with God, you always have a new chance. Every time you mess up, you can always know that God is willing to have you back. Okay? Point number two. You have to allow God to plant you in a new company, a new environment. Even if God doesn't relocate you physically, He will relocate you socially he will relocate you emotionally because our journey towards restoration always involves a new mindset so take it from this broadcast when we are standing in the shoes of Samson and we read that his hair began to grow again. And we understand that the Holy Spirit of God revisited him. What made it possible? Number one, Samson returned to his first love, 
he repented. Amen. Number two, God in his mercy relocated him emotionally. God in his mercy relocated him even socially. There was a change of mind. He had a new mindset. If you are going to enjoy God, you need to know that when you fall short, God will open another chance to you, but it will involve a change of environment, it will involve a change of company, because what will be the purpose if you fell short because you are moving in the company of adulterers and you remain in that company when you said you have repented, you have not yet repented. What will be the purpose if you are in the company of thieves, of people who hated God, and then you said you repented, and you did not leave their company? You will see that throughout the Bible, God was always encouraging us. Bad company corrupts good habits. So God will tell you, God will motivate you, change your company, change your environment. When the Lord was going to begin a great job in the life of Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, God said to Abraham, leave your country, leave your culture, leave your family, go to a land that I will show you physical relocation and throughout his lifetime you will see Abraham in his journey with God not because he had sinned every time not because he had fallen short every time but in his relationship with God God was constantly enabling him to change his location to change his environment which inevitably meant a new mindset for Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, for instance, God said to Abraham, I'm the Lord God Almighty. Walk thou before me and be blameless. And Abraham was 90 years old at the time that God was saying to him, Walk before me and be blameless. We are all human. We need to grow in our relationship with God. There is no one amongst us that is perfect. Paul the Apostle in the book of Philippians says, I have not yet arrived. I have not yet apprehended, but I'm pressing forward on this journey with God. I'm pressing forward. You too, you must learn to press forward. When you fall short, it's important for you to look at your environment because your environment always contributes to your failure. The people around you might be the wrong people in your life. The company you keep always contributes to our failure. The company that we keep. That's why if you are going to enjoy the fact that with God, there is no last chance. Anytime you fall short, look around you. God requires a new mindset. God requires a new way of thinking. God requires a new environment for you socially. A new environment for you in the way you think. A shift in the way you think. A new environment for you in the people that surrounds you. So, allow God to plant you in a new company, a new environment. Even if God doesn't relocate you physically, He will relocate you socially. Remember, restoration always involves a new mindset, a mental shift from useless ways of thinking and processing the issues of life to a new way of seeing God and handling life. A new way of seeing God and handling life. 
Think of a person like Rahab, the prostitute. God relocated her. She had a different mindset and she became an important vessel in the hands of God. You will see this in Joshua chapter 6, verses 23 to 25. What about Ruth, the Moabite woman? God had already said no Moabite will be found in the company of God's people. But Ruth was given an exception. Why? Because she had a different mindset. A different mindset. And God relocated her from the land of Moab to the land of Israel. God changed the people in our life. And I really want to tell you, if you want to make definite progress in life, always look at the people who are around you. Your success or failure is often determined by the people who are in your life. There is no last chance with God if you understand these things. Amen. Look at the example of Naomi, even the Jewish widow, when she had come to a situation of utter desperation. God relocated her from the land of Moab to the land of Israel. And even when she arrived in the land of Israel, Naomi said, God took me out full, brought me back empty. Don't call me Naomi again. Call me Mira. Mira means bitter. Because the Almighty had dealt bitterly with me. But when he she came into the land of Israel. Her social environment changed. Her mindset changed. She became a blessed vessel in the hand of God. Remember tonight, standing in the shoes of Samson, there is no last chance in your relationship with God. God is willing, gracious, utterly happy, to have you back. That's why Jesus says, no one who comes to me will be cast away. May God always give each one of us the grace to come to him when we are falling short. Don't let self-condemnation destroy you. Don't let the condemnation of other people destroy you. Don't let the way that people criticize you they call you a prostitute, they call you a failure, they call you whatever negative name they call you. Don't let it destroy you. Remember, there is no last chance with God. God can restore you. God can give you a new life, a brand new life. God can restart your life afresh and make you a very blessed vessel. In life, when you have blown it many times, people will definitely say they don't want to help you again. But not God. If you understand the point that God in his mercy is teaching us tonight, allow God to reform you. Allow God to give you a new mindset. Allow God to take you out of the environment of failure, of disaster of disobedience to God into an environment that God in his mercy will begin to shape your life, to obey him, to trust him. You will know when you get into that new company that God means for you. You will know it. Because that new environment, that new company will be drawing you closer and closer to God. And you will see the benefits of that new company that new environment, that new set of people in your life, you'll begin to see the benefits. May God in his mercy help us. Time is far gone. Point number three. Point number three, where we are going to stop. You have to learn how to step out again. 
You know, sometimes when we are falling short, we are so full of guilt. We are so full of shame. We are so full of embarrassment. And there are people who will use what we have passed through against us. They will say, how can you be a minister of God? You who are X, Y, Z. You know, that is how people behave. They will not expose their own hypocrisy. They will not see themselves as imperfect. They will not see their own flaws, but they will look at you and point to what describes, what God describes as specks in your eyes. They will point at those specks as logs, as beams, as issues that God is looking at and God will not favor you because of those issues. They will pile blame on you. They will pile guilt on you. They will pile condemnation on you. Now, that will make it difficult for you to step out again and be the best that God wants you to be. Don't listen to such people. Don't listen to hypocrites. Don't listen to people who are so self-righteous that they think that they are the best, they are more superior, they are holier than you, that they are nearer to God than you. Don't let anybody make you feel so utterly ashamed of yourself that you cannot step out again and become a confident person. See what Samson did. His hair began to grow again and he stepped out. He said to God, give me this opportunity to become a champion again for you. You too. You need to know that no matter what has happened in your life, you need to step out again. Get that self-confidence back. Get that self-esteem back. Get that positive understanding of God's goodness in your life back. Remember, God is not a man. God is not like any man or any woman who will utterly condemn and not give you another chance. Listen, in the shoes of Samson, there is no final chance with God. There are always chances. Maybe you blew your marriage and you are now divorced. There is another chance and, an, and another chance. Maybe you failed your exam and you are thinking that is it for the end of your life. No, step out again. Discover God's true purpose for your life. God's true purpose of your life can never be aborted when you know what the Lord is teaching us about today. God's purpose for your life can never be aborted when you follow through what God is teaching us today. Don't let any man or woman bring you down and make you feel so unable or incapable of rising up again. God is there. There is no final chance with God. God's mercies are new every morning. His compassions never fail. I'm encouraging you in the shoes of Samson. Have you blown up so many chances? Have you messed up several times? Have you come to a place where people now give you a name as a failure, a moral failure, a social failure, an economic failure? Have you come to a place where people are looking at your gender or they are looking at your age and they are saying, hmm, you can never make it again. The ball has passed by you. The water has flown beyond you. Please listen carefully. There is no final chance with God. Samson's hair began to grow again. God's Holy Spirit revisited him. Samson achieved more at the time of his death 
than he achieved during his whole lifetime. Samson's role as the judge that God made him to be, as the leader that God made him to be, was not aborted by his several mishaps, by his several mess-ups. Remember what the Lord is sharing with us in today's broadcast. In the shoes of Samson, there is no final chance with God. His mercies are new every morning. His compassions never fail. So remember this final point. Step out again. When you take a small step towards God, God will meet you with his giant steps. When you take a small step of faith towards God, God will meet you with his own giant steps. Steps. You will take, you will take just one small step. And God will meet you with many giant steps of his love, of his grace, of his kindness, of his, you know, of his utter love towards you in Christ Jesus. You see that in the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son came back, came to his senses, ran back to his father. From afar, his father saw him and said, there is no final chance. You are still my son. The son said, make me a servant. The father said, no, you are still my son. You've blown many chances, but there is no final chance that says, now that was your final chance. You can't ever get back to God. There is no final chance. If you know what the Lord is teaching us in this broadcast, in the shoes of Samson. Amen. So you see the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, from verse 17 to verse 24. You see how his father ran towards him, kissed him, and killed the fatted calf to celebrate the return of his lost son. He said, this my son was lost, but is now found. And they threw a wild party. Remember what Jesus says, there is great rejoicing over one sinner that repents. May you be that one person today. May I be that one person today. That one person who returned to his or her first love for God. That one person who said to himself or herself, I have got to understand that God wants to plant me in a new company, a new environment. I have got to leave behind the things which are hindrances. I've got to come out of the circle of people who hinder me, people who mislead me, people who make my life to go in the wrong direction with God. And finally, I've got to step out again. I've got to step out again, regain the confidence that only comes from God. Let's finish. Proverbs 24, verse 16. A righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. What are we saying? A righteous person may fall seven times, but they will rise again. So who is a wicked? A wicked person is somebody who was determined never to go with God. A wicked person is somebody who was determined to abandon God completely, to reject God completely, to reject the goals of God for their life. That's a wicked person. But a righteous person who is trying to walk with God daily, when you fall short, God is more than willing to give you another chance. Micah chapter 7 verse 8, where we are going to stop. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, listen very carefully. The Lord will be a light to me. Why? There is no final chance with God. No final chance. God's mercies are new every morning. 
God's compassions never fail. Receive hope today. Receive hope today. Receive hope today. Return to your first love. Allow God to plant you in a new environment, a new company, and step out again. Rediscover your purpose for life, the meaningfulness of God's love in your life. Step out. Get confident again. You're looking for a job and you have been turned down several times. Get up and go again. Is there anything that people can look at you and say you are a failure? Shrug it off. Step out again. God is more than able to meet you with his own giant steps as you step out with your own small step. Remember, today's broadcast is standing in the shoes of Samson. There is no final chance with God. God's mercies are new every morning. His compassions never fail. If anything has shaven off the hair of your head, may your hair begin to grow again. May your future look bright again to you. May you find hope in a season of hopelessness. May you find encouragement in a season of discouragement. May you know that God is sovereign in life and He is more than able to change our circumstances according to his own program. May you come to the welcome embrace of a loving father, a kind and gracious God. He is waiting for you. God bless you. Until another broadcast, I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Ilori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye for now.